at the end of World War II, as engineers began designing interstates and, and other like major transportation systems, they adopted an approach called forgiving design, and it's absolutely brilliant. Those early highways replaced a lot of cart paths and, and minor roads. And if you think about riding on a, a, a horse and buggy on a little road and you, you come up to a tree or a gully or a big rock, you would just go around it. And so those early uh, roads that we built would just go around these obstacles. And what people found is that driving high speed with obstacles wound up with a lot of tragedy. People would go off the road, they would hit things and they would die. Forgiving design tried to address that. It tried to address the typical mistakes that drivers make. You're driving along and you, you, you weave a little bit in the lane for whatever reason. Uh, the way we solve that is we make wider lanes. You uh, are driving along and you lose control and you go off the road a little bit. We make a wider shoulder for you. Uh, you lose control completely and you exit the road. Now we make a clear zone for you where we remove all the obstacles so that you can go very quickly. The idea of forgiving design is a brilliant one and it has saved millions and millions of lives on our highways, on our interstates. The problem is forgiving design was never meant to apply to local streets. It was never meant to apply to our neighborhoods. These design ideas, these insights, have no basis in places where people are walking, people are biking, people are crossing the streets on wheelchairs, kids are playing in yards. When we take forgiving design mentality and we bring it into our cities, we do a huge injustice to our places and we are building things that are unsafe. I'm Chuck Marone and that is my confession.